Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you another Haunting Hour episode review. This episode comes from Season 2. It was directed by Neil Fernley and written by Catherine Boutree. And the episode in question is Dreamcatcher. Now, Dreamcatcher was one of those episodes that I saw way early on when I started watching the Haunting Hour television show for the first time around like mid to late Season 1. And I got hooked on the show pretty much until season four. <laughs> and then I was in high school when the show came out. And I was just blown away by this kind of bringing back what Goosebumps was in its heyday. And it reminded me on why I loved kids horror to begin with. And this episode, for the longest time, was my absolute favorite episode of the whole show. Whenever people ask me, hey, what's the best Haunting Hour episode? I would tell them each and every time. It's Dreamcatcher. But as the years have gone on, especially in recent times, I started to notice some smaller things about this episode that kind of irk me a bit. <laughs> but that does not go without saying how great this episode really is. This is a fan favorite from the show. A lot of people put this in like the top 10 episodes of the entire series, or at least top 20. And I get why. I mean... This has to be one of the scariest kids' horror episodes ever made, period. It's pure horror, and if you don't know the concept, it's basically a nightmare on Elm Street for kids. <laughs> so take that for what you will. So off the bat, if you have never seen The Haunting Hour before, and you want to know what the show is like, or maybe try a popular episode out first to see if you might like the show... This is a great starting point for you. You might be absolutely blown away, especially if you've only ever watched Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark. I'm, I guarantee you this will get to you in, a, <laughs> in some way. So, yeah, go check this out. With that out the way, let's get into the plot overview without giving too much away. So, Dreamcatcher is essentially about a all-girls camp. Uh, it's set in the summertime, so it's a camp campground story essentially uh but like you know where kids go away and sleep away camp uh you know that that shtick and uh the main character is named lisa and she is a brand new camper i don't i forget the name of the camp i, I want to say it might be pine grove pine needle or something like that i forget what it is but it's something with pine in it i feel um she's on the bus heading to this camp and she befriends this girl named amelia and in doing so, this other girl named Meg does not like the fact that Amelia is interacting with new campers and tries to bully Lisa and Amelia for essentially hanging out together. And this continues on when they get to the campgrounds and <laughs> uh, they get out to essentially, you know, converse with their new bunkmates and all that. Meg is not happy. And uh, it continues on... Uh, pretty much when uh, the girls are going to make their inaugural dream catchers, which is like, I guess, a, a camp tradition at this camp. And uh, Lee Lisa's um, dream catcher seems to catch the eye of the camp counselor, and this irritates Meg in a few ways. So Meg decides to essentially uh, get under... Lisa's skin later that day while they're you know in their bunk at night we saw some uh turmoil with the kids when they were trying to pick out their beds early on I kind of skimmed over that part but that does play in a play a role later as well where um Meg essentially wakes up Lisa and tells her the legend of this dream catcher demon that uh, is said to have taken the life of a girl camper years ago and she said that when she fell asleep, the dream, the dream catcher came for her. And when they found her, she was kind of staring off into nothing and she was essentially dead. Uh, so this, of course, freaks Lisa out. And somehow they start to, to notice that the dream catchers that they make at camp may or may not be uh, correlated with this dream demon. And as the story goes along, Meg gets this bright idea to cut up Amelia and Lisa's dream catchers that they hung above their beds. And when, when that happens, 
uh, Lisa in particular starts to have a vivid nightmare of this <laughs> white-faced spider demon thing with long stringy black hair and pointed teeth and it looks absolutely terrifying and she's able to kind of wake herself up due to her like screaming and her bunkmates wake her up and when they go out to venture the, the woods later that day uh, she's talking with Amelia about it and she's kind of saying hey I had the same dream too and when they kind of compare notes they realize that their dream catchers were cut and they immediately point the finger to Meg and Meg has essentially screwed them over royally so they go to the counselor to complain on Meg and she said uh, basically you know that wasn't right for Meg to do and Meg gets scolded a bit and to get some retaliation on their part uh, Lisa takes it upon herself to cut up Meg's dream catcher as well well as the story goes along the girls are trying to fight sleep to avoid this dream catcher and there's this I iconic scene where they're at this campfire and Lisa kind of nods off and she has this weird <laughs> interaction while like in her dream state at the campsite around the fire with the dream demon and when she wakes up all the campers are like you know are, are you okay and she's like I just haven't been sleeping well and this kind of boils down to pretty much the end of the story because this, this story's uh, pretty lightning paced um Lisa and her friend Amelia they don't want to go to sleep because they know the risks of interacting with the demon and they know something about this cave uh, because early on when they were journeying in the woods they noticed the cave nearby and think and they seem to think that that might be the the hideout of where this demon is in the dream realm so they decide to make a pretty much a stay up party and they try to chug soda and stay awake and uh, kind of fight sleep together meanwhile Meg not knowing that her dream catcher was cut <laughs> decides to kind of sleep away from the bunk uh, to essentially, uh, you know, try to scare the girls a little bit. And she has this own little plan. I don't want to get into too much detail, but she's kind of off in her own area. Well, Lisa and Amelia may or may not actually fall asleep and enter the dream realm along with Meg. And uh, their stories essentially converge in the climax of the story where uh, after Lisa has a very narrow escape with the dream demon and we get to see what exactly the demon is doing with people who have dream catchers uh, and people who don't essentially they get chased off into the woods into the dream demons layer of sorts and the two girls um, Amelia and Lisa are kind of left in there while Meg is kind of off looking around trying to see if she can find the girls uh, see if she can like you know scare him a little bit and she ends up stumbling across a realization that she in fact is in this reality or I guess dream reality with these girls and it may or may not end well for at least one of these girls uh, because by the ending of the story the dream demon rears its ugly head and one of them are implied to have a really dark ending <laughs> let's just say that so that in a nutshell is their dream catcher episode i'm going to keep it very vague on that last portion of the episode because uh this is one of the darker episodes and i kind of want to let y'all just see it to believe it and uh and just enjoy it for what it is so yeah the dream catcher episode is a marvelous story for the haunting hour television show i think this episode establishes street credit for this television series it, it really is scary and I don't normally say that because, you know, when I'm when I'm thinking about horror, I usually can appreciate a scene that, you know, is kind of metal or, you know, out there for kids horror. And I can appreciate how that might be scary for a kid or something like that. But this episode pulls out all the stops <laughs> with the dream demon design and just the concept. It's very much like A Nightmare on Elm Street meets a campfire story at a camp so it's just oozing with atmosphere it has an urban legend quality to it the acting uh lisa meg and amelia they're all great actors even the side characters are great the villain performance the dream catchers actor does a phenomenal job 
um, the setting choice, even though the woods look kind of familiar because the Haunting Hour was very infamous for reusing a bunch of set pieces. I'm pretty sure these exact woods were used in the Dead Body episodes. And also, I think Lots of Luck and some other ones that take place out in the woods, maybe even Spores. Uh, but for in, in this specific case, uh, they made something very gritty with it and it's it just there's something foreboding going on throughout the whole story especially once the story is told from meg to try to scare lisa that something is off and something bad is coming and you can kind of feel that omen building up and there's great tension um and there's good misdirects and some people get what's coming to them and and we see the good people somehow come on top potentially and it's just a very whole feeling story through and through. I mean, it's not the most special thing ever. It's not the most thematic thing ever. Uh, but the dream catcher element, uh, while it's not played for themes in the story, it offers something more visceral that you don't really see in kids horror all too much. I'll, honestly, this episode really has no outright huge negatives to it. If I have any negatives with the episode it comes down to technical delivery on the episode if i'm being honest the first thing i i will tell you about this episode that has not aged well is the editing of it it starts out pretty good but once the dream demon comes in i guarantee you this episode suffered from either network obstruction or they had to edit out some things for runtime, or they had to edit out some things because I went possibly too far. <laughs> and I don't know exactly what the case is. I, I wish we had an actual, like, complete uh, box set of this show and maybe some commentary from directors or creators or um, maybe some interviews out there about certain episodes, like the popular ones, uh, as the case of Dreamcatcher understand some backstory of how some episodes turn out the way they did but if I had to guess um the editing got really choppy especially any time that the dream demon made its appearance and I don't know maybe it was kind of a thing in the editing room where they're like maybe we got to conceal it as much as possible to have a lasting effect near the end to make it more scarier the less you show the more impactful it is I can get that strategy but then you have scenes where you, you do see the Dream Demon front and center, but the editing is so bizarre, and, and, and it doesn't look natural, and it just, it's not pleasant <laughs> to view it. Uh, what, the particular scene I'm referring to, especially here, is the scene where Lisa is in the cabin going to the bathroom, and she's cornered in the bathroom from the Dream Catcher, and I'm not kidding, this is the exact sequence. She's chased out of the bathroom, she ends up back in the bunk, she sees the dream catcher sucking out some dreams on top of a kid, and then she freaks out, screams, tries to run out the door, and the dream catcher is like crawling around in a weird way, like hissing, doing its head like this, and then there's a big cutaway. Like, it's just really bad editing on that part, and I don't know the exact motives for why it was edited that way, or maybe... The reasons why it ended up like that but it's just really jarring and it is a negative to the episode and another thing that you know some people might disagree with me on this and this is totally fine but over the years I've kind of come to think that how the story wraps up doesn't really feel like that's where they wanted to end the story it ends on a massive cliffhanger and a stinger almost where you know you see you hear the iconic line was if i if it, you know if it, i think it says like if i wasn't real uh you wouldn't be here or if you were awake i wouldn't be here or something like that and that's fine and dandy but where the story ends i i just don't buy that that's where they wanted to end it you know what i mean and how the story builds up with meg and the two other girls is fine and all uh, and I think the the back half of the, the episode spends its time showing, uh, you know, Meg's journey and thinking that she's about to get one up on these girls, but to have the rug pulled under from them 
and seeing these girl, the other two girls get some vindication, that's cool and all. But I just don't feel like that's where the episode originally ended. Uh, I don't know the exact details. This kind of ties to the other negative. There could possibly could be cut scenes that they initially had at the end. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, the direction of the story, I have never read the script of this. I, I, I'm pretty sure the script of this is out there somewhere um, where, you know, I just, I just had this feeling that it went further than what it did. And honestly, I've gotten to the point where this episode, every time I watch it, I want to see where it goes. You know what I mean? I, I feel like it ends at a point where I guess it's satisfying because it doesn't go too far for a kid's program. That's great and all. But at the end of the day, I'm an adult. And, you know, I think Goosebumps stories, you wouldn't think go farther than what they do, but they surprisingly do sometimes. And this one should have kind of swung for the fences a little bit like some goosebumps or even nightmare room stories for that matter. And it just didn't do it. Uh, but I will say this, those negatives, especially that second one where the ending could have just kept going and gone farther with it. I do think that there's something impactful about kind of imagining what's going to happen than actually seeing it because that adds to the, the, the lasting impression of somebody watching it. So I can still appreciate it, you know what I mean? And it's not like the biggest negative ever, but it, it is something that I just find an issue with. I don't know what it is. It's just me. Some people, Like I said, some people are probably going to disagree with it, but that's just where I'm at with it these days. So all in all, the, the, the Dreamcatcher episode from the Haunting Hour TV show is a magnificent one. It is definitely earned as a popular episode, I feel. It's not quite perfect, uh, in my opinion. There are, there are those things kind of holding it back, but it, this is one that lives rent-free in my head. I would still probably consider this possibly a top five contender for me in the show. Uh, I have to see, uh, <laughs> by the time I finish it, <coughs> where exactly I'm at with it. Uh, but as of now, from a zero to five star basis, I'd probably give this episode, you know, I was leaning around a 4.6, but I've kind of talked myself into giving this maybe like a 4.7 out of 5 stars. I think this episode is something as addicting to watch as some of my favorite Goosebumps episodes that I've given the same score to. In fact, I think it's even scarier than those, and I'm kind of upset that I don't give this thing any higher, but I feel like 4.7, maybe a 4.8, but... That might be another day where I might bump it up to that is my ceiling for this. You know, uh, those negatives I do have with it are very small and they don't really matter all that much in the grand scheme, but they are there and I feel like I have to acknowledge them here. Uh, but this is still an episode that holds up. I mean, it's almost, what, 14, pushing 15 years old. And I still think that it's one of those envelope-pushing episodes in kids' horror. Easily still one of the scariest ones I've seen. And I've seen episodes from Are You Afraid of the Dark, Goosebumps, The Haunting Hour, The Nightmare Room, Creeped Out, you know, you name it. It's still up there for that. So, yeah, go check this out if you haven't seen it before. And let me know down in the comments section if you've seen Dreamcatcher before. Do you love this episode? Do you hate it? Is it one of your favorite Haunting Hour episodes? I'm dying to know. And I'll see you next time.